Multiple Geo replicas are now available in public preview for Azure SQL Hyperscale. Learn all about them and the other types of replicas this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, we have an exciting episode planned for you. We're going to be talking about uh, geo replicas, then some of the other types of replicas available for Azure SQL Hyperscale. And to do that, I'm bringing on Matt Hyan, uh, product manager on the SQL team. Matt, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah. Hi, Anna. How are you? Um, I'm Matt Hyan, a product manager on the SQL team, and I'm focused on the high availability and disaster recovery features for SQL. Awesome. Cool. And one of those features I think is what we're going to talk about, and that's around geo-replication. Uh, but before we get into it, I'd love to kind of understand a little bit more about like what is Azure SQL Hyperscale and why might people even be thinking about geo-replication for it? Yeah, let's get into it. Um, Hyperscale, as you know, is one of our most scalable and flexible database services in Azure. And really one of the key ways we deliver on that scalability is with the various replica types Hyperscale offers. So Hyperscale actually offers three different types of replicas or secondaries, one being the high availability replica that gives you that hot standby capability to recover from any local faults. Um, it also allows you to do read workloads against those replicas. But if you really want a customizable, really broad uh, read-only workload, um, that's where you go for named replicas. And you can have up to 30 of these configured each independently of each other uh, to give you that broad read scale out capability. Last but not least are the geo replicas. These ensure that your applications are resilient to regional faults. Now, the only problem has been for hyperscale is that we only supported one per primary database until now. So now we have up to four geo replicas per hyperscale primary, and these can be in the same region or different region to give you that flexibility. So with all of these combinations of replicas, you can really fine tune how you want to deliver your workloads on this highly customizable database. Awesome, great, that's awesome. And, and what, what a couple of questions actually maybe on geo replicas. So this is something that's new, this multiple geo replicas, it's in public preview, that's kind of what you're announcing today. Um, how is it different from failover groups? Mm, that's a good question. So geo replicas do not have that endpoint redirection that failover groups have. So you would have to adjust your connection strings if you fail over between geo replicas. Um, failover groups are actually built on top of geo replicas under the hood. Um, it, with failover groups, you just get that extra uh, conveniences of endpoint direction and um, ability to fail over multiple sets of databases together as a group, which it, do it doesn't happen with geo replicas but on their own. Awesome. Gotcha. It makes a ton of sense. And, and how does someone kind of decide now that we have this new kind of multiple geo replicas available uh, to go with this route versus maybe using another high availability replica or a named replica? Yeah, that's a good question. And it, it really does depend on what your main purpose is for each of these kinds of replicas to consider. Um, if you're really looking for that hot standby capability, HA replica is what you need. If you're looking for um, a way to help a lot of your downstream data consumers have read access to your database, and you know they don't necessarily need the, the same level of compute, or maybe they need more compute for their reporting needs, that's where you look for uh, named replicas to help you out. And then um, the last one, the geo replica is really for geo redundancy or potentially read workloads that you want hosted out of a different region. So that's when you would look for geo replicas. But you can mix and match all of these together to give you, you know, capabilities for different kinds of consumers of your data and really helps out um, to accommodate all of your, your consumers. Cool, awesome. Yeah, it definitely seems like now you just have a lot of flexibility to get exactly yeah. what it is that you need when it comes to secondary replicas with hyperscale. Um, super great to see these updates. Uh, I think you had something to show us. I'd love to take a look at how these these new replicas play out. Yeah, let's let's get a, let's get a demo going and see this in action. All right, so here we have a uh, server with a hyperscale database in it. Let's click on that hyperscale database. 
And then take a look at the replicas from the replicas tab here. Now I cheated. I already have three replicas, uh, geo replicas for this database. So you'll see them here. Um, you have the primary here shown and then three geo replicas. Let's create a fourth one. So we'll create a fourth one. We'll uh, scroll down to create it on server two. And then review the settings and create it. Confirm everything and create for provisioning. And then after a few minutes, uh, once the deployment is confirmed, we can take a look at um, the database specifics of this replica. So deployment is complete. We'll go to the resource. And then we'll click on the replicas link here for this database replica. And then now we can see four geo replicas for the primary. Let's try failover. So we just created it on server two. Let's make that the primary. So we go over to the context menu, click on the failover button. Yes, we want to fail over. And after a brief moment, we'll click on the refresh button. And then now we see that server two is serving as the primary. And the other instances are now readable geo secondaries. Now let's round this out by stopping replication to server five. And again, context menu gives you that option. We'll click stop. And then after a brief moment, we'll refresh the screen again and, and we'll see that server five is no longer part of that geo replica set. And that's nice our demo. Awesome. Pretty, pretty straightforward, makes sense. Yep. And it kind of just works. Very simple. I love it. Um, question for you, as folks are kind of getting into this and starting to figure out, you know, how to use multiple geo replicas with Azure SQL Hyperscale, are there any like gotchas or limitations they mm. should think about? Yeah, good question. Um, there are still limitations that you cannot do point in time restores for geo replicas. And the other limitation for Hyperscale is that we do not allow chaining, which is creating a geo replica of a geo replica. So that's not supported. Got it. That makes sense. And yeah, I th would think if you have multiple geo replicas, why would you need chaining anyways? Yeah. <laughs> um, good point. So that's why we have four now. <laughs> awesome. Cool. I'm sure I saw from that laugh. It does get complicated sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, as we wrap, you know, I learned a lot. I'm sure our viewers learned a lot. Any final tips or tricks or words of advice? Uh, no, take a look at our uh, replicas documentation. I think you'll find really interesting ways that you can take advantage of all three replica types to accommodate whatever workload that you have. It really makes Hyperscale one of the most distinct database services out there. Awesome. Great. Well, Matt, thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, viewers, if you like this episode, go ahead, give us a like, leave us a comment, and let us know what you think about the new capabilities for multiple geo replicas in Azure SQL Hyperscale. Uh, we'll put that link in the description for you to go learn more easily. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. <laughs>